Now we're going to look at a game involving the rolling of two dice. If the sum is 12, you win $10. Otherwise, if the sum is greater than 8, you win $5. But now if the sum is less than 8, you don't win anything. So the cost to play is $2. So what we're going to do, we've got three potential outcomes. So let's go sum of 12. Sum greater than 8. And then you could say sum less than or equal to 8. Okay. So when we look at the probabilities, so sum of 12. Okay. Probability greater than 8. And then you have all other situations. Probability less than or equal to 8. All right. So on this next page, I actually have the table of all your potential outcomes. So this is a 6 by 6 graph. So there's 36 outcomes. So let's say sum of 12. So you add up the numbers. That's 1. So that's 1 out of 36. Okay, and then we need values greater than 8. So sums greater than 8. Let's see, that's 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now don't count the 6 and the 6 because remember... That's an overlapping event. It's greater than 8, but it's also equal to 12. So we don't want to double count. So we want to include that. So we've got 3, 6, 9. We've got 9 values. 9 out of 36. Now we can go ahead and simplify, but for this case, we'll just leave it. and It'll, it'll wash out at the end. Um, so now we've got 1 plus 9. That's 10 potential outcomes, everything else will be less than or equal to 8. So that's 36 minus 10, which is 26 out of 36. Now, again, we don't have to simplify. We can, but just to make sure we, we've covered all of that sample space, we just want it to be unsimplified fractions. All right, so now let's look at our net winnings, okay? So let's look at our net. So if we, if the sum is 12, right, we win $10, but it, the cost was $2. So our net is $8, okay? For a sum greater than 8, our net equals $5, but the cost was $2. So the net is actually $3. Okay. Less than or equal to 8. All right. If you're less than or equal to 8, you don't win anything. And you still pay $2. So your net in this case is negative 2. All right. So we've covered the entire sample space. We know the, the winnings or the earnings. So now we can find the expected value. So E of X will equal 1 over 36 times $8 plus 9 over 36. And again, you can simplify it to 1 4. That's fine. Times $3. Plus 26 over 36, which would be, I guess we could go 13 over 18 if you want to simplify, but we'll go 26 over 36 
but you're going to lose $2. Okay, so we want to know, and put your negative. Make note of that negative sign. Okay, so I'm taking my calculator. I'm going to do 1 over 36 times my $8 plus my 9 over 36 times my $3 plus my 26 over 36 times negative $2. So if we played this game, the expected value is actually negative 47, because we're talking about money, 47 cents, okay? So I would lose money on this game. So find the expected value, and then the actual question of should you play. I'm not going to spend $2 to lose $0.47. Cents. I will come out better just keeping my money. Okay. So now, let's say the game changed or the cost of the game changed. Okay. What is the expected value and should we play? Again, the probabilities are still the same. So we could just go directly to the expected value. So the expected value would be one out of 36. Now, instead of us, our net being $8, it would actually go up to $9. All right? Because the, the game's a dollar less. Okay? Plus the 9 out of 36 times, I guess this would be $4. And then the 26 out of 36, instead of losing $2, you would actually just lose $1, okay? And then we type it into our calculators again. And the only thing that's changing is the net. I guess you would call it the net winnings. Y'all will go up by a dollar. Okay. And in this case, our expected value would be $0.53. Cents. So you still have to ask yourself, if I spend a dollar to win $0.53, cents, is it worth it? So that's more subjective. The, the previous one, you were losing money automatically. This one, you have to make make a decision with respect to is that a good play? You're getting potentially half of what you put in uh, back if you if you play this game. Okay, now the final example. Okay, insurance companies do this all the time. All right, so we have a situation where this insurance company is selling earthquake policies okay and the probability that an earthquake earthquake will occur notice they gave me a decimal so the probability of earthquake and this in decimal form which is fine is 0 0.0013 now we're going to contrast that with the probability of the complement okay or no earthquake. All right now, remember the definition of complement is just one minus the probability of earthquake, which is one minus point zero zero one three, which is actually point nine nine eight seven. Okay, so that's the probability of no earthquake. All right now. With these type of questions, you've got to be very careful about the question. It says, if the company offers earthquake insurance for $100, what is their, the key word is their, their expected value. Okay, not, not you as a policy owner, the insurance company. So what you do is you say, okay, 
what does the insurance company net if there's an earthquake? So if there's an earthquake, the insurance company will receive my $100 because that's my premium. But if there's an earthquake, they're going to pay me $60,000. Okay? So they have $100 coming in for me, but if there's an earthquake, they have to pay me $60,000. So that means in a situation like this, the insurance company will be out $59,900. And it's got to be negative, so... Okay, and just pay attention to that negative sign. Okay, now on the flip side, if there is no earthquake, the insurance company still receives $100 from me. But guess what? They're not paying out. So they net $100. Okay? All right, so now we can go ahead and find the expected value for the insurance company. So the expected value... For the insurance company. Okay, if there's an earthquake, we know the probability is point, point zero, zero, 0.0013. You say, well, they're going to pay out $59,900. But if there is no earthquake, which there is a 0.9987% chance that they're going to make $100. Okay, take your calculators and you find out that the expected value for the insurance company is $22. Okay, so what this means is that the insurance company will take that risk because guess what? They're up, they're positive. Okay, and that's a single policy holder. So now if I've got millions of policy holders, I'm making millions of dollars. Okay. So they'll take that risk. Now, if they ask this question, same exact question, and they said, if you as a consumer, they can say, what is your expected value? Okay, as a consumer, the only thing that would happen, okay, and let's, let's contrast this. Let's go red. So let's say expected value for the consumer. Okay? Only thing is same exact probabilities and everything. The only thing that would change is the net would become if I'm a consumer I would if there's an earthquake I would gain 60,000. But I paid out a hundred. Okay, so that means I'll net fifty nine thousand nine hundred dollars. And if there's an earthquake, if there isn't an earthquake, the net would be I would receive nothing, but I still paid out a hundred dollars, which would be. Negative 100. Okay? So, same exact problem. But the only thing that would change in this calculation is the consumer would be out $22. Now, the question may be, well, why would I do that? And the reason being is because of the laws. Like, most consumers don't have $60,000 of cash sitting around waiting on the earthquake. So, yeah, you're out $22.00 a year, but you potentially, if there's an earthquake, the insurance company will kick in the $60,000 that you need or the $59,900 that you need if you pay your premiums. I hope this helps.